After a long day of training or a fight in the Colosseum, a Roman gladiator might need something to kind of refresh themselves. Unfortunately, they got a couple millennia before Gatorade would be invented. So instead, they drank a concoction of vinegar and plant ash. And that's what we're making today. Gladiator Gatorade. This time on Drinking History. In the city of Ephesus, archaeologists have found gladiator bones that have a very high amount of strontium and calcium. And Pliny the Elder, quoting Varro, explains why. For convulsions or contusions of the viscera, let the hearth be your medicine box. For a lie of ashes taken from thence mixed with your drink will effect a cure. Witness the gladiators, for example, who, when disabled at the games, refresh themselves with this drink. So that's kind of what we're making today, except I'm not going to be drinking lye because, well, that's stupid. But instead, I am going to be mixing some plant ash into a posca of wine vinegar, water, and honey. And for more information on posca, watch this video. I'll put a link up there uh, where I talk about posca. So first, we need some ash. Unfortunately, I have a gas fireplace. So instead, I am opting for culinary ash that is often used in uh, Hopi cooking from the Hopi tribe in Arizona, which is where I'm from. And so that's what I'm gonna be using. I would stick to culinary ash because you never know what's in any kind of other ash. In fact, maybe don't make this at all. Maybe just leave this to me. Uh, watch me try not to poison myself while you kick back with a soda or something like that. Then I'll need some wine vinegar and some honey and of course some water. So all we're gonna do is mix this together. We don't have any real uh, quantities of how much we put in. Hopefully not so much ash that I, I don't know what a safe amount of ash is. <laughs> I looked at some, some recipes where it's used and, and I've kind of gleaned how much I, I am going to be able to use. So let's hope, I, I'm, let's hope I'm right. So just a little bit of that wine vinegar that really um, that's the electrolytes and whatnot. And then just a bit of this plant ash and stir. Alrighty then, I am going to uh, pour this through a strainer simply because there seems to be, you know, some of the, some of the ash has larger particles. Let's see how this goes. Want to bet I'm not going to drink this whole thing? Now, before I try this potion, I'll remind you that on Tuesday's episode, we talked about some of the food that gladiators ate and talked about the life of some typical gladiator. But today, we're going to be counting down the top five atypical gladiators. So the typical gladiator only fought a few times before dying in their mid-20s. But our number five gladiator, Flama, defied those odds. Number five, Flama. He was a Syrian gladiator during the time of Hadrian and became one of the most famous gladiators in the Roman Empire. His gravestone reads, Flama, Secutor, fought 34 times, won 21 times, fought to a draw nine times, won reprieve four times. And what makes him exceptional is that on four different occasions, he was awarded the rudis, or the wooden sword or baton that was given to a gladiator to award them their freedom. And every single time, he turned it down, opting instead to remain a gladiator. Exceptional, yes. Exceptionally smart, no. Because while he did make it past that mid-twenties mark, he died at 30. Number four, Spiculus. Now, he would land on pretty much any list of top gladiators ever in his own right. He was really the Mike Tyson of his age. But the reason that he is on our list is because of one of his fans. Spiculus's biggest fan was the Emperor Nero. And whenever the gladiator won a fight, Nero gave him properties and villas equal to those of men who had celebrated triumphs. He became one of the wealthiest gladiators in history. And Nero was such a fan of his that when he was overthrown in 68 AD, he reached out to the gladiator and asked him to kill him. Unfortunately, either because he couldn't be reached or because he was like, new phone who dis, Spiculus did not kill him. Instead, Nero had to commit suicide. Number three, Mevia, the gladiatrix. 
So there were a number of female gladiators in ancient Rome, but they tended to be seen more as oddities rather than anything else. Sometimes they would dress up as Amazons and fight mythical mock battles, and sometimes they would be pitted against like amputees or wounded animals in a sick form of mockery. Often they were the poorest of the poor, but the poet Juvenal speaks of rich women who have lost all sense of the dignities and duties of their sex. And he also gives us one of the only names for one of these gladiatrices, Mevia. Mevia transfixes the Tuscan boar and with breasts exposed, grasps the hunting spears. But while this sounds exceptional, it's part of a list of kind of things that he's ridiculing. So they didn't have a great, great reputation. Number two, the Emperor Commodus. Now many emperors actually fought in the arena, including Caligula, Caracalla, Titus, and even Hadrian. But none is more famous than Commodus, perhaps because he was featured in the movie Gladiator. But typically, when an emperor was fighting, the risk to them was minimal. Cassiodio writes of some of Commodus's exploits in the arena. On the first day, he killed a hundred bears all by himself, shooting down at them from the railing of the balustrade. On another day, he descended to the arena from his place above and cut down all the animals that approached him. They were led up to him or brought before him in nets. Yeah, that's not really as impressive as he might think it is. Though he did actually fight gladiators, but it doesn't seem that those bouts were all that dangerous either. Cassius Dio says that only after the emperor went back to his seat up in the stands did the contests no longer resemble child's play, but were so serious that great numbers of men were killed. Though that didn't stop Commodus from dedicating a statue to himself with the inscription, Champion of Secutoris, only left-handed fighter to conquer 12 times 1,000 men. Sure, Jan. And number one, Spartacus. Without a doubt, the most famous gladiator in history was, of course, Spartacus. And not just because he has an excellent movie and a mediocre TV show made after him. No, it was because he led his fellow gladiators and other slaves in the Third Servile War, or Spartacus's War. It was a slave revolt that threatened to topple the Roman Republic. It lasted two years, during which time Spartacus bested a number of generals in the Roman army until Marcus Licinius Crassus took over. The writer Appian says that after a particularly bad defeat, Crassus punished his own soldiers. He decimated the whole army and was not deterred by their numbers, but destroyed about 4,000 of them. Whichever way it was, he demonstrated to them that he was more dangerous to them than the enemy. So with his army more afraid of him than they were of Spartacus, it actually started to turn the tide of the war and eventually Spartacus was defeated. But his legacy was such that he was one of the factors that led to a law that said that no Roman citizen could have more than 320 pairs of gladiators in Rome at any time. Not sure why they put them in pairs, let's just say 640, but either way, it still seems like a lot of gladiators to me, but I guess it was less than they had before. So that's our top five atypical gladiators. And now it is time for me to try this atypical gladiatorial drink. Ah, mamma mia. actually really refreshing. I mean, I don't know. Oh, nope, there it is. I was gonna say, the ash doesn't get, doesn't really contribute anything. You just kind of get that that slight sourness, the, the bite from the, um, from the vinegar, and then the sweetness of the honey, which actually isn't that bad. But then at the end, you get this almost smokiness. And the Romans actually used to use ash in cooking to add a bit of a, a smokiness. They would use um, oak ash and Acacia, I believe. But, um, yeah, not bad. Am I going to finish this? No. No, I am not. Um, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was fun to make. It's fun to kind of guess what they, what they might have been drinking. I'm sure glad I'm not a gladiator is all I can say. So that's it for Gladiator Week. I don't know necessarily that it's week, but I did two episodes back to back on gladiators. So, yeah, that's it. I will see you next time on Drinking History. I'm going to just switch to water right now, though.